So we are in Saint Philibert in Quebec. We left our beautiful island Newfoundland. We're visiting some family and dealing with a lot of paperwork. So buying a sailboat is pretty awesome, but there's a bit more involved to it. So really over the last couple of over the last week and a half, I'd say we've been learning a lot about all the different steps that are involved with um, buying a sailboat. We're back in Quebec. Drove the, throughout the night yesterday, so we got here around 3.30, took a shower and pretty much went to bed. So from 4 o'clock to about 8.30 I got a little bit of sleep, but then I had to get up to call the marina so that I could reserve our slim, because apparently there's not that many spots. So with buying a sailboat, there's a few different steps involved, from finding the sailboat, making an offer to purchase a sailboat, either licensing the sailboat or registering the sailboat, having an inspection and getting insurance before you can start working on it and fixing all the gazillion things. So now we're onto the paperwork. So I'm making a list of all the different things we've got to do because well, we've got to get an agreement going to sign between us and the brandy seller. We've got to no, we won't be able to fully finalize insurance, but we've got to send some pictures and information. Then I've got to print off all the paperwork for the Canadian vessel registry so that we can have the vessel, the sailboat registered, which would then allow us to leave Canada. Otherwise, if it's only licensed, we're kind of stuck in. Well, we just found out this morning that we officially own the sailboat because we signed all the papers. That's all dealt with. That's really exciting. It finally sort of feels re real. It's not quite, I don't know, I guess it, it, it doesn't quite feel real yet because it's so, um, ah, I don't know, it's crazy. What uh, Corey's trying to say is that we've been looking at sailboats for two years, got close to buying two of them last year, but you know, sometimes stuff happens last minute that deals don't go through because People love their sailboats. We found out that sailboats are pretty much like a baby looks like. So anyways, we're super excited. We got a sailboat! So I'll tell you all about all the different steps involved with buying a sailboat. Come on, take a walk with me while we talk. So really, first things first, find a sailboat, connect with the owner and go visit the sailboat. Once you've fallen in love with that specific sailboat, try to get an inspection, but do your research. Find a good inspectors because in this world where a lot of the inspectors don't really need any certifications, it can be challenging finding one that's actually that actually cares about you. <laughs> <laughs> so the one we found, Peter, was wonderful. He actually spent seven hours with us, looked at everything, the hull, the deck, below deck, gave us a bunch, gave us a bunch of tips on how to fix certain things. So buying a sailboat can be really interesting depending on which owners you deal with. We've had a lot of different types of experiences from people who were really trustworthy to sketchy people <laughs> but it's always nice when you get to know the owner because you get to learn a little bit more of information about the sailboat we even tracked down the previous owner not the one we're buying it from but the other one and he told us a bunch of information of what kind of sailing condition the boat survives and all that so after you've fallen in love with your sailboat and done your inspection and decide to actually go ahead and purchase it there's a few steps to do. There's either licensing or registering a sailboat. We want to sell our sailboat in Lake Erie in Ontario, Canada for the first year. But afterwards, we really want to get going sailing and we want to explore the whole planet, really. So we need to register our sailboat. The difference between registering a boat and licensing a boat, essentially we're going to have to license the boat regardless because the registration is a bit of a process. Essentially, we have to track down every single previous owner of the boat and make sure we have a sales agreement. 
uh, between a bill of sale rather sorry not a sales agreement because that's not acceptable you actually need a bill of sale which proves that you know you've actually paid in full for the boat and uh, a slight you know a quick description of the boat luckily our sailboat Shoshana sailboat has only had four owners so it makes the process a little bit simpler we don't have to connect with like 20 different people so you still gotta apply for a license, which is much more simple, simpler than registration, but you still gotta fill up a little bit of paperwork. Having a lot of fun. We learn stuff every single day. Eh? So I'm actually filling up the application for a new registry with the Transport Canada. And gosh, there's so many questions. Name of the builder, place, city and year of built, blah, 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 blah and try to get a bill of sale from them, get the builder's certificate, which I'm still looking for. I don't think we're gonna get one, to be honest. I even tried connecting with Hunter, the actual company that makes the boats, which is actually no longer in business, has transferred to Hunter Marlow. Application uh, for registry. Then we've got statement of qualification for vessel registration. I've got to fill one and Corey has to fill one as well. Then appointment of authorized representative. Only got to fill one of those at least. Um, what's the next one? Simplified method of tonnage measurement. Then we need the bill of sale and we got to give them money, you know, for all this paper. So right now I am dealing with re registration, which involves me calling the US Coast Guard to try to get an evidence of deletion, just to make sure that the sailboat is not in the States anymore and that everything's been transferred to Canada. So let's do this call the vessel registry around your own place we are canadians so we're dealing with transport canada and all that and there's some very 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 helpful people along with some people who don't know as much what they're talking about but just ask for the right people and you're gonna get all the information you require so the nice thing about buying a sailboat is that you can move your home anywhere but for the first year since we've got to do a little bit of work we had to find a nice marina that has a lot of different amenities and something that's not too too expensive either. So we found a marina in Port Colborne, which is exactly where the sailboat is located at right now. But when you get a marina, a lot of them are getting a lot popular nowadays, it seems like. So you want to make sure you reserve a slip for your sailboat. So although our sailboat will be on the heart for the first Hopefully not too long, only a couple of weeks, but who knows, stuff does happen. You still need to try to book a slip if you have any intentions of putting your sailboat in the water during the summer. So first things first, we call the marina and give them information about the sailboat link because there are different slips and the way marina works, usually you will be paying per foot. So the bigger your sailboat, the more money you're gonna end up paying and different marinas have different types of amenities but most of them will usually have showers laundry washer kind of facilities but just to touch on that uh, by amenities we also really need for us because we're doing some work on the boat we really wanted to make sure that there's a uh, marina with uh, all the tools and stuff, or not tools, but at least uh, a yard that we can get all of our gear that we need. So whether that be fiberglass or resin or just bits and pieces for the boat, we wanted to make sure we we're near a boat yard that would have all of that stuff. Uh, as well as, I just wanted to mention, if you're just throwing your boat in the water and you plan to sail away right away, you do not need the slip. But if you're like us and we plan to stay for a little while, you definitely want to look into uh, the yearly slip rate because by the week it's much more expensive. Most marinas will require you to have insurance. So you want to make sure you have at least one or two million dollar liability insurance. Another step that you need to do is getting insurance. As for myself and Corey, well, it's been a bit of a roller coaster of emotions because we're both, we're originally from Quebec, resident of Newfoundland, purchasing a sailboat in Ontario. 
how much more complex does it get? So really, long story short, Ontario doesn't want to insure us because we're not from Ontario. Newfoundland had a bit of trouble because, well, we're not from New resident of Newfoundland, but the boat isn't in Newfoundland. But we did manage to find someone that could actually insure us. So do a little bit of research before you get uh, diving into purchasing a sailboat somewhere. Uh, we've got to evaluate a little bit cost of repairs and just organize budget wise because we have a lot of money saved up to pay for a lot of things, but we're also borrowing a bit of money. So there is easier ways of doing it so that you don't pay as much money because sailboats are just like a car you don't really get any good mortgage like houses so if you take loans out you actually pay very high interest so we're trying to organize it so that we don't have to pay too much there's a lot of different ways of getting some money to buy a sailboat best one is to work super hard and save a lot of money but if you don't have enough money saved up or you've saved up some money and you're still in the process of getting more of that uh, income going there is also loans but loans can be really expensive it's not like buying a house you're not gonna get the great rates of like two three percent interest rates so what we found out is that line of credits for sailboat is pretty much the only option you've got to go with or sometimes depending which credit cards you're with there might be some promotions of lower interest rates with my visa credit card i have a really low interest rate of only three percent up until for about seven months so that's gonna be a route that we're gonna be using to get a little bit more extra income to fix up the boat as soon as we can so I'm doing some shopping for free I won't even have to spend a penny so when you want to live a simple lifestyle it's always nice to try to find ways of reducing your expenses for refitting your boat as well as trying to find free things or recycling so my mom has a lot tons and tons of fabric so right now i'm actually looking through all the different pieces of fabric and trying to choose what our cushions are going to look like as well as our curtains so guys that's pretty much it for all the really boring stuff Sorry to bore you guys, but we found there's very little information online, uh, especially on a lot of the YouTubers' channels, about this sort of thing because, uh, well, it's not that fun to talk about. It's probably the least entertaining thing to put up there, but it's needed. It's, it's, it's part of the process. If we don't go through all this boring paperwork that, thank God, Alex is willing to go through, um, we wouldn't be able to get the boat, you know, we wouldn't be able to get it legally anyway and make sure that it was all in our name and make sure that we could get it registered like Alex was saying because that's a whole nother process in itself. So yeah, that's why we decided to do this. Hopefully some of you found it useful and if not, well, the next ones will be much better, I promise. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow us along on our adventure and hit that like button if you liked what you saw.